Alexa. Oh, shit. Are you lying? It went away. Don't All right. I have a scar on my forehead that's shining bright. Hi. Gosh. Gosh. Okay. Hello. I'm Mrs. Melanin. And I'm Belief Mel. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. You matter. <laughs> right. One more time. Hi. I'm Mrs. Melanin. And I'm Belief Mel. And we're here with How Married Are You? Yeah, we're here with episode four of How Married Are You? Oh. We're going to count each episode? Yeah. I think it's important. Okay. Hi, I'm Mrs. Melanin. And I'm Belief Mel. And we're here with episode four of How, How Married Are you? are you? I still feel very mechanical. Uh, you don't gotta I'm do it. Right, so we're picking up from last episode. Uh, how's the connection, guys? How you guys like these toddler tear mugs? I'm going to put these up on the site, but I want to give patrons first dibs. These are the left-handed edition. This is um, for the left-hand gang. Everyone who has a wedding ring should be wearing this. <laughs> My wedding ring doesn't fit. We talked about this before. Um, but left-handed gang, uh, Theo's left-handed, and we think Anaya's left-handed. So to celebrate our lefties, we're doing left-handed mugs. These mugs were inspired by one time Theo and I. Theo was sitting there and he was talking to me and I was like, knock it off. That's something, I was saying something to him. And he was like, dad, if you don't let me watch TV, I'm gonna cry. And I said, I will drink your tears. And then that was like, oh, that'd be a cool mug. <laughs> Tracy, this is coffee. All right. Hi, so. Tracy. What are we talking about today, babe? Okay, so this is from um, Chaz Nee. I don't know if she's in the Patreon group or not. I don't think so. Um, it says, I think this episode needs like a part two with your perspective as an educated, career goal focused single woman. What made you give Glenn a chance? Typically, women have these laundry lists of requirements, right? Do you think in 2018 we should have the same perspective as you, or do you think times have changed and we should keep our wants, a job, career, established, yada, yada, yada? Or preference. Babe, I didn't find my list. I forgot to look for it today. Um, and so based on that commentary, we were like, yeah, let's do a part two of... And to be honest, I don't really know how to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, what made you give me a chance? I don't know why I gave him a chance. Honest, I don't know. I think you were pretty desperate out in these streets. <gasps> actually, no, babe. When you came along, it was when I was like, actually, I had just develop even if you go back and you look at my journals from that time frame mm -hmm. it was when i had just became completely content with my singlehood and like what i was doing in life and then you came along and i was very confused as to why the lord would bring you into my life at that moment in time because i had just become content mm -hmm. with where i was and who i was you know what i mean mm -hmm. so I um I even have journals to prove it. I mean, I'm sure you I'm sure you're telling the truth, but the fact is I was very much in the same place. Like I wasn't thirsty for relationships. I had just got out of like a another friend another friend zone. I escaped another friend zone situation and I was very proud of that. Um and I wasn't thirsty to be with somebody, but I do think I do think you were like I don't know what it was, but you were very intrigued and like impressed with god knows what because i wasn't very impressing my situation wasn't very impressed i wasn't even that great of a rapper at the time i was not attracted to your rapping i know that. that's for sure i know that but i'm just saying like if we're thinking about it from that perspective why did you give me a chance i gave you a chance because i really i hate to say this repeatedly but it was the lord Really? Like even before? Like I saw what? Oh, you mean before? Like what? like before we even like all right. Let's run it back to the first time we actually decided we were interested in each other. Okay. Let's 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 describe that situation. Are you talking about in two thousand nine? Mm-hmm. Because you were interested in me before that. True, but you were oblivious. So, but I'm talking about we were both mutually interested in each other, and your eyes were open. Well, actually, you were interested in me first initially, on site. I, I, I don't understand what are you talking about. So I wrote a poem. Oh. 
I forgot about that. I was at her BSU event um, where she was like an attendee of the BSU and um, I was like DJing and they were doing some poetry and around that time I was doing poetry heavy. Uh, shout out to Elevated, Rudy Francisco and Black All Them Guys. And so I was doing like this poetry thing and I did this poem about this woman who was somewhere out there and like by the end of the poem like she never existed. You know what I'm saying? And she was like all in awe. And so she... No, this is what happened. The poem basically described me. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's anything wrong with being self-aware of who you are. <laughs> yeah, so... But I listened to him perform that poem, and I looked over, I don't know, Brittany's not in this group poem, but mm -hmm. I looked over to my friend Brittany, and I was like, hey, he's talking about me. Mm -hmm. I remember saying that. But I didn't, like, at that point... That was like 2007. Yeah, that was a long, that, that was a couple of years before we actually started dating. But um, yeah, he's he delivered the poem really well. And he has this, Glenn just has this like natural swag about him. I don't know if anyone else notices it, but he's just, it's kind of, Theo kind of thinks he has it too, but Theo might be trying a little Theo's too got hard. it, I think Theo's Theo got does it. have it, but I just don't like it because it's, He's just it's whatever. Sure, yeah. Anyway, Glenn has this natural like swag. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's just like he just. This is so embarrassing <laughs> to, to sit next to you. Like he this. doesn't even have to try hard. He just walks and it's like, dang, you're fine. Dang, really? <laughs> yeah, babe, you have like this sway. I don't know if it's a sway. I'm hot. I'm getting you hot. That's the hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hot though, for real. Can we get a fan or something? Can you give me that disc or that vinyl? Um, anyways, what was I trying to say? Yeah, basically, Glenn just has this natural like swagger about him. I know people out there notice it. It's okay, but he's mine. Um, and so that was what attracted me because I definitely wasn't necessarily attracted to the dreads and the beard. Mm -hmm. It was more, it was definitely like... So it wasn't a physical attraction? It was not a physical attraction. So this is a good way to... I did, I was attracted to your confidence though. Okay. If that makes sense. So like the way you walked, the way you spoke, even like your fake Baltimore... It took a while to get that walk down. <laughs> even my fake Baltimore, come on now. Your fake Baltimore accent. Babe, it's not Babe. a fake... Okay, listen. Sometimes like you are, you've been in California for so long mm -hmm. and you talk normal, but when you get on the phone... With certain people, or when you're around certain people, you start to put that accent on real thick. Yeah, just like when you get around your mom, all of a sudden you're from South Carolina. <laughs> oh, we got some cornbread, some biscuits, some Kool-Aid around here. That's what you sound like. Soon as you get around your mom, <laughs> soon as you get around your mom, you start talking all types of Southern out of nowhere. Really? Yes, and it's so annoying. Does my mom even talk? Yes. Southern? Hey, y'all. How's it going? You're so loud. <laughs> Can you be quiet? Jeez. Oh. Oh, Stephanie, yes. It's kind of like that Obama swag, for real. Do you know what I'm talking about? When you when we say the Obama bounce? Yeah, I mean, like, it's not supposed to be spoken of. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not supposed to speak about it. You don't speak about the way you walk. You just kind of like, oh, I've developed this way I walk, but I'm never going to, I'm just going to act like this is how I always walk. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so you worked at that? Heck yeah. <gasps> like, what? that's a, yeah, because it's like you got to get a confidence down. You understand? Like, you have to have confidence, like, you know? Like, you don't... Okay. All right. So, Yvette, you didn't really have a walk. <laughs> Babe, be careful. Be careful. I feel like this is supposed to be a oh safe place. God. Okay, it's a safe place, but don't hurt my feelings. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm just saying that. Oh, you're saying you weren't sexy. Hi, Mom. No, it's not. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Mom's in the group, and she heard. I don't know if she heard. Maybe she might did have to run it back. Did you talking about your southern accent, Mom? Uh-oh. Mom, did you hear him? Tell me. There's a delay, I guess. Mm -hmm. Here we okay, go. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so it's not something that you, like, it's something that you pay attention to. And so, all right, so it's like this. When, I, when you go up around other men, right, who mm -hmm. display a certain type of masculinity, mm -hmm. you implement that, a part of that masculinity to attract the women that they attract. Where I grew up, like, the dudes around were, like, these really cool dudes, but the, the, 
the cool thing to do was like, as a lot of them dudes were like just on on the street. They just were like kind of these dudes that always look like they walk with a with a um like with a like I know where I'm going. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I also learned it from being in high school, being on a drill team. Mm. So on the drill team, because I was in ROTC, I was the captain of the drill team in ROTC in high school. And it's a certain confidence to where you're looking and your bearing means that whoever's in front of you actually don't see them. You're actually looking past them. You know what I'm saying? And so all of that and everything I've seen and the things I admired from these men I grew up around, I like implemented those styles and that's how I got to walk. But now this like... When we go out somewhere, they're going to be like, hey, let me see that corny walk, you bum. Boo, your walk is whack. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you're not supposed to bring attention to that. You might cut this whole part out of the podcast <laughs> because it's supposed to be a secret. Well, I like your walk, babe. I like your walk, too, babe. Oh, you do like I my do walk. I do like your walk. I'm just saying, like. I didn't have one or I do. Wait, do. I didn't have one and I now have one I'm or I saying, don't have like, one. I'm just saying, like, I feel like you have elevated since. You know what I'm saying? Like, you when you- I progress. You progress for sure, you know? But I feel like you like you want to go out and you want to like doll up. And when you do that, I can tell your whole demeanor changes when you do that, you know what I'm saying? But let's talk about this. Oh, wait, what's happening? Okay, go ahead. It's called peacocking. Look at Rich. <laughs> oh, heck no, I missed that. Can I rewind? No, you can't rewind. <laughs> you finna get blocked. <laughs> no, mom, you about to get blocked. Mom said, Can I rewind? Oh, heck no. You was talking about my accent. <laughs> I missed that. Can I rewind? That's so funny. Nope. Um, all right. It's so, so hot. Is it the lights? It's me. <laughs> you talking about the walk. It just got you. Um, <laughs> so I think we got a small fan around here, right? You probably made me throw it away. In facts. We're in the garage, y'all. I don't know if anybody knows that. And it definitely is a hot day. So. Speaking of how we gave each other a chance, right? okay. I want to go into, maybe we should go into- Did I answer the question though? I don't think you had an answer for it. I, I, okay, so let me just go back and answer the question. Okay. And to answer the question, I was attracted to your confidence. I was attracted to um, your heart, like just the way you seem to care and be so like severely polite as a man. And you weren't like, Hey, you over there? You know, like how some guys would back in that. Babe, but that's how I started, though. I mean, but I didn't meet yeah. you at that phase, okay? Yeah, that's crazy. And so, um, and then like just your love for the Lord right. and your desire to really like please Him through the way that you courted me. Mm -hmm. So that was attractive. Okay. That's what I was attracted to, and also I'm not gonna lie, I was also attracted to your potential. I mean, when you. When we got married, I was trying to get you to go to college. I think you even went to college for a semester. Mm -hmm. And then we realized That's it's not just not him. My mom said, oh, so his dreads, tats, and pier pierced ears didn't attract you? <laughs> no. No, not at all. No. And my mom, I think my mom and dad knew there had to be something more than just his outward appearance when I brought him through the door for the first time. Yeah. I, I remember my mom and dad were sitting at the kitchen table <laughs> And then Glenn comes around the corner, and I'm like, oh, shoot, here we go. And I was walking in like, hello, hi, how are you? Yeah, he was very confident. Very, like. This is who I am. You know what's crazy is that my little brother has that confidence all the way through. Mm -hmm. And he could be sliding down a freaking mountain. <laughs> <laughs> and he's sitting there just looking all confident. <laughs> Mom said she liked that you were so freaking polite. Okay. So let's talk real quick about... Um, that confidence. So there's a certain, there's a difference between being confident and being comfortable. Okay. Mm. Yvette, oh, okay. <laughs> Yvette was very comfortable. Like it was a week after we got married <laughs> <laughs> for her bridal shower. She got all types of lingerie, right? All types of lingerie. I'm like, man, this looks like a little excessive. You know what I mean? Like a whole suitcase full of lingerie. And she comes to bed <laughs> with the craziest looking thing. It was I, a hand-me-down for my mom. And I still miss that thing to this day. I said, you got to throw that away. It was a overalls. It wasn't an overalls. It was like a jumper. So it was like a button-up. 
plaid. Plaid. <laughs> it looked like Green. something a cabbage patch would wear. And it looked like a chastity belt. It looked like birth control. <laughs> and I was like, this is not appetizing at all. But it was so comfortable. It was so comfortable. Yeah, and I made you throw it away. And I'm, I and like. He didn't make me throw it away. He threw it away because there was no oh. way that I was going to put it in the trash. And that was so mean of me because I so wish we mean. could pull it out just for this moment <laughs> and just be like, look, y'all. <laughs> or just had a picture of it because it looked like something from the 70s. It was so comfortable. I still miss it. And it was like breathable material. So you could go to sleep and you would, it could be hot or cold or whatever, and you'd just be. Fine. It had no entrance. Like I, I would have, you had to take you that whole. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a onesie. It was like if I wore it, you knew you weren't getting any yeah. that night. That's so funny. Oh, what a hilarious! Oh man. And I was like, man, like this is what we're starting out with. <laughs> it was rough. I was like, oh man. And so that's when I was kind of like, oh, you're comfortable. We were in there. <laughs> we were in there. Like you know, it wasn't like no nervousness or whatever. I figured you're not going nowhere. Uh, someone, I'm definitely not going anywhere. How has having kids changed your relationship? Anjali, she asked that question. She's here. You can jump in there. Um, how has having kids? We both got real sad in our faces. <laughs> it changed everything. You just have to be a lot more intentional. Yeah, like it. Like I think it brought out the fact that we weren't really focused on each other mm -hmm. in the beginning mm -hmm. because now we are like in order to get anything done or even to have a conversation we have to be really focused on each other mm -hmm. and so it just exposed the fact that we weren't really focused on what we needed to be focused on mm -hmm. yeah and I think in the beginning um if we could have done something different and we talked about this last episode is we would spend more time together and like try to, to be spontaneous and go places i um, was trying y'all you were trying and you're still trying <laughs> your effort hasn't decreased you've been consistently trying um i'm just down for a good time yeah always always um but yeah i feel like <clears throat> in the beginning of our relationship i think well i think it was interesting how mutual like we were, we were both in the same place. We weren't trying to, like we weren't trying hard to like stay together or nothing. It just was like we were, we liked each other and we were hanging out. And it wasn't as difficult as some people make it seem. Mm. I think a lot of times when I see other people in their relationships, it's always like a Rubik's Cube. Mm. And it seems like, that's so interesting. it seems like, oh, well, <clears throat> he doesn't like baseball. Or I mean, well, he doesn't like, you know, this artist. Or I can't be with somebody who can't do this. Or I can't mess with somebody who doesn't like this. And Yvette and I are like really complete opposites in a lot of ways. It's so interesting that you bring that up because I was thinking earlier that might be a good thing for us to talk about, but you're right. We didn't have to try very hard during the courtship or anything. We just hung out, spent time together, enjoyed each other's company. Um, but I do often think about like how different we are. Like you, for example, love music. You know so much about different artists, different styles of lyricism. You can write, you can rhyme, you know, like, I can't even use the right terminology now. But I didn't know anything about all that stuff. And you still were okay with it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because um, I've heard, like, I've heard dudes, like, be like, yeah, man, she don't even know who Jada Kiss is. And, like, or, like, Mob Deep or something like that. And I can't be with somebody who don't know hip-hop. But I'm like... Like, Nate Dog died, and Yvette went on Twitter and said, who's Nate Dog?" Oh, my gosh. And John <laughs> and I were like, yo, delete that tweet, please. And then John was, like, so John upset. Was very upset. And I'm like, bro, this is your fault. Because <laughs> <What? laughs> I'm like, you grew up with her. You, you, she should know who Nate Dog is by you she guys hanging out. And I'm and just years. saying, I, he had more responsibility than I did at that point. But, like, I think that's the interesting thing, is that we didn't have to be so agreeable and together. I think these cameras are about to die. But um, we didn't have to be so agreeable and together 
and and like understanding each other's point of views because that's all fruit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like all of those things are um like come from what we experience and they manifested through what we experience, right? So when we became together, um and so when we came together, uh it was like we both died and all the fruit, right? They, they're still there, but we had to become something together. So it really doesn't matter about all the branches and the fruit as much as it does about what the foundation is. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And um, when we are planted together in that foundation, I feel like we could really grow together mm. um, and we could make something totally different. And I never was into um, gospel music. But when I met you, you were like, oh, I'm, I feel so sorry for you because you love gospel music. And I had a, I was driving in this little Civic, but I had a tape deck and she made me a tape of all these like gospel songs. You know what I'm saying? And it was like really, really dope. Um, we need to play those for our children. Yeah. Uh, but like, we didn't have so much in common, but we did have the foundation, which is Jesus. And that's where really we could grow from. And I feel like we are going to be okay, you know. Uh, and another thing I, m I mentioned, oh, yeah, more than okay. But I mentioned last time about how your tribe and your family, your extended family, seemed like they wanted to protect you from me because they didn't know me. I'm not talking about your mom and your dad and your brother so much, but, like, the extended family. Mm -hmm. Like, they were kind of like, mm, I don't know about this dude. Mm -hmm. um, and I was kind of like, man, like, I don't really like being judged. But I realized that they had to protect their investment. Mm. You know what I mean? And so as a community of people, we are these type of people. And as if you're coming in, we want to make sure that you have something to offer to this girl, mm -hmm. you know? And maybe her mom won't say something about it, but I'm curious. So I'm going to ask, you know what I mean? So I actually am now like, oh, I understand why they wanted to protect their tribe, their community, their environment. Um, I'm pretty much done Stephanie now. said, can you define we were both in the same place? Yeah. Um, it wasn't like... Oh, there's a lot of questions, actually. Okay. We'll, we'll, hang, we'll bang out those questions and then see if we can do a part one, part two or something. I don't know if this is on. What's the question? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, can you define we were in the same place? What does that mean? Yeah, so we were both in a place where we were single. It wasn't like you had a boyfriend and I was like, hey, shorty, like, come over here. Like, um, we were both single. I said I was content in my singlehood. Yeah, we were both very content in our singlehood. We weren't thirsty and, like, desperate. Like, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't even like I was chasing you or you were chasing me. It was kind of like we were just looking at each other like, eh, you want to hang out? You know what I mean? And... It was, for me, it was so much of a logical decision and not a, like, falling in love type situation. It just was like, I think you'd be, like, an awesome wife and a good mom. And to be honest with you, and I think maybe that's another reason I gave you a chance is because I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't that girl. I wasn't that girl who was pursued. I think, and I don't know if this sounds um, to whatever, but I do believe that I was intimidating to other young men at that point in my life, just because like I had a college degree, I was on my way to becoming a teacher. Like I was very established and I was very focused and I knew exactly what I wanted and I went after it. And, um, and so I, and I was a believer and I was very strong in my convictions, you know, but for the Lord. And so I just didn't have guys that kind of like were even approached me. Okay, I've had, I've been approached, but not by like strong godly men. I don't know. Anyways. Do you think dudes wanted to like taint you? Like what do you think their approach was? People saw me as a good Christian church girl. I think. I don't know if this is like a, a actual thing, but this is how I... This is my experience from what, this is how I'm interpreting that stage of my life. People saw me as a good Christian girl. Um, I was a daughter of 
a preacher. My mom was the choir director, Sunday school teacher. Like I was, I went to a Christian university. I was good stock. And I think people saw that in me. Um, I don't know if they wanted to taint me. I don't know if people, or maybe they, I don't know. I don't know what that is, but um, I never really had anyone like pursue me the way that Glenn pursued me. And I'm not, and you said you didn't pursue me, but. It wasn't like a, wasn't, but it wasn't a hunt, like a yeah. chase. Like um, most dudes, was, not not most dudes, but sometimes when, when men, <laughs> and I'm sorry, like the type of men I grew up around and like, we knew that we wanted something, so we wanted to go get it. Do you know what I mean? And so, like, it was like a hunting, gathering type situation. Like, and when we talked about it, it was always like, oh, I'm go I want to bag a shorty. Like, these are the terms, like, bag. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or, um, you know, like, even the, the terms for sex was like smash, beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was very derogatory and, like, harmful. It sound bad. I still use those terms. <laughs> One time I had pink eye. And I put an eye patch, I had an eye patch on, and I walked up to her, I was like, you, would you let me smash like this? Remember that? <laughs> um, um, yeah, but anyway, like, but I never treated you like that when we were first. No, yeah, no. Never. Like, now in marriage, it's just fun and games, but. Yeah. Uh, but what I was saying is, you pursued me very respectfully. Yeah, it was very like, okay, first we're going to do this, and we're going to like see what it was like. Like, I want to see what your family's like. I want to know you. Let's mm -hmm. hang out with some friends. Let's not. Let's hang out over here. Let's see what you're like over here. Mm -hmm. And also, I was very uh, into, like, okay, I don't like when you talk to me like this. It makes me feel like I just don't want to be around you. And I don't, like, I don't need to be around you. And then, like, you got with, like, yo, I don't ever want you to make you feel like you don't want to be around me, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I was very much about protecting my heart and, mm -hmm. and protecting And that heart. goes into someone else's question. Oh, here it is. I want to know about the boundaries set during the dating process, godly courtship, etc. I didn't even want to kiss. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Yeah. And yeah, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, yo, like, I don't want to, I just don't want to. And little me, I was so naive and inexperienced, but I was like, um, no, we how are we going to know we're compatible and if we don't What kiss? about chemistry? I had only seen what I had seen on TV, so, you know. Yeah, she's watching Lifetime a lot. <laughs> and so that was like her, that was your measuring I part. wouldn't say Lifetime, but okay. And soap operas. Soap operas. Lifetime. You and your mom was on them soaps. <laughs> My and mom that was still on those soaps. Yeah, so that was something for me. I was kind of like, you watch soap operas. I'm like, I don't know about that. My grandma watched soap operas. No offense, mom. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, yeah, like I had, um, like we tried to keep it as, you know what I'm saying, like as distant as possible. But I think Yvette's curiosity was kind of one of the things that was like, yo, like I don't want to do anything because I know it's just going to lead to more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so. And so me being like the virgin in the relationship glenn would he had to educate me on things mm -hmm. like a simple touch mm -hmm. or like you know he could change to, my mind it could alter you yeah he like he was very the thing about him too is he's just so direct and sometimes it can seem like very off-putting but it's still very valuable and i think that that helped in our relationship because he, he would always tell me i'm not going to hell for you <laughs> or yeah. he's like, I'm not, you know, whatever. And so, I don't know. I feel like he was very direct. Now, we weren't perfect, um, yeah. but we did try to, like, have a curfew, try not to hang out, you know, past a certain hour. Um, it didn't. It didn't work. We didn't work. That didn't, <laughs> was not consistent. Yeah. Um, we got to do an episode on marrying a virgin. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, Stephanie asks. There was another one. Did you get? Is that the top one? Okay. That's yeah, good. Stephanie. Um, have you ever had trouble communicating? How have you overcome those hurdles, or what steps are you taking to overcome them? Yeah, we've had trouble communicating. We just got out of a big argument, but we didn't argue. But I just was like, I can't talk to you, and I don't want to be around you. Yeah. Anyway, um, the thing about Glenn is that he's able to verbally communicate and process his thoughts out loud while he's talking 
and communicate that way. I'll be me, the, my yeah, analogies. Be can crazy. I be talk? Can I talk? Me on the other hand, I will be in the middle of. We don't really. I don't want to call them fights, but we have discussions. We have courageous conversations, as my mom would call them, um, where we have to discuss something that's whatever going on in our marriage or our relationship, and um, Blend's able to communicate it just fine. But me, I have to like sit with it for a while in order to be able to communicate it in a way that actually gets through. And I don't know that I always do that. And so I am a better writer. So I will sometimes write out my thoughts or feelings and give it to Glenn to read. And I think we've even come to the point in our relationship where I've read it to you. Have I ever done that? I've done that before, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. <laughs> but it after helps. you close the book and walk away. I'm like, well, what the heck am I supposed to do with all that? <laughs> it's, that's just how we work. And then sometimes, honestly, like if we can't, get through to each other we go and sit on Pat and Sharon's couch and they help us process and communicate each other's thoughts to each other yeah that makes sense. and I think what, what I do is I, I'll like sit there and be like okay I'm trying to get this across to you so I feel like I'm in a fish tank but I can't reach the surface to get the food and then I'll be like, oh, yeah. I'll be like, come up like mad analogies to try He's to help her understand. He's a lyricist, poet, rapper. It's annoying. It's frustrating because he can literally, he'll do that. And I'll be like, oh, that makes sense. I even have a notes in my phone where I'd be like, oh, let me write that one down <laughs> so I can remember what he says. But I mean, that was a bad example of, of a good analogy. But sometimes like I try to break it down for her. So she's like, yo, this is what I'm trying to say. And this is how I feel. And I know, because like for some of it, I don't think he, it's not that he vet, the communication goes like this. Like, it's not that she's doing something intentionally to hurt me. She just doesn't see my perspective. Mm -hmm. And the same for me with her. Like, I'm not, and we have to remind each other, okay, we're on the same team. Mm -hmm. Like, I love you. I'm on the same team with you. We both want the same things, but we're just going about them the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Typically, it's me going about them the wrong way. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't just put it on you, because like, you, even if you you're going about it the wrong way, like I still am responsible for you understanding where we're at, and my actions support that. So sometimes you go, "Do you even love me?" Right? You ask me that, and I think that is such a ridiculous question because if anything in the world you know you know that I love you and I show it to you all the time but you want it in like mad different ways you know what I'm saying like you want them all the ways and I'm like I'm showing you by doing this you know what I'm saying and it's like so I'm I feel like I'm always having to like you know like I'm trying to like just keep a ball up in the air like see 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 and then like try to go back to work and I'm like, I, I, I still love you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I, you know, I don't know. So yeah, we have a real hard time communicating. It's nothing we're good at. Mm -hmm. But I just know and I believe that eventually we'll be better. And I just know that. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's hard to lose sight of that. Sometimes I get really like, because last time we were talking about submission, and then I like had to think about it. I was like, you don't be submitting at all. That was what our argument was about. Yeah. Argument. Yeah. And it really was like, I just went quiet and dark. Because I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. I was having a really hard time. And um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you balance that with like the kids and then work and trying to keep it all together. And opportunities, like, Belief in Fatherhood is doing really well, mm -hmm. and it has been doing well. But if her and I ain't clicking, you might as well not be doing anything right, mm -hmm. you know? From a male's perspective, how did it feel to pursue her? And from your perspective, what vibes was she giving off to let you know that you could pursue her? I mean, initially, I tried to holler, up, holler at her back in 2007. She was like the reason I got a Facebook. Like I had MySpace and she, I, I was like, you got a MySpace? <laughs> she was like, nah, I got Facebook because she was in college. And I was like, all right, cool. I went home, got on Facebook, added her and we talked. And 
the whole time I'm trying to like show signs that I'm interested and she's not picking it up. So I was like, well, forget her. I didn't unfriend her. And I just <laughs> was like, forget her then. Um, and then like she went back and looked at it like years later. And was like, oh well, my that God. was after we like talked. Yeah, after we got After together. we were legitimately together. He was like, I was trying to get at you years ago. And then we looked and I was like, man, I totally missed all of that. I, um, yeah, I was oblivious. Yeah, mom said, um, and about the extended family. No, they um, absolutely love you. Yeah, exactly. Who about doesn't the love Glenn? They got to be a hater for sure. <laughs> <You're funny. laughs> they got to be a hater. Like, if somebody don't like me, it's probably a hater. Yeah, Yvette wants all five love languages all the time. I get that. I don't really, I don't. Stephanie, stop. <laughs> it's okay um, to get it. No, yeah, yeah. And the thing about like the whole five love languages thing, because I think we're kind of alluding to that in some of these comments, is like during diff like throughout your relationship, your love languages change. Like mm -hmm. I think our love languages are always changing. Glenn's is pretty much always physical touch, but um, mm -mm. acts of service. Acts of service is big for me now. Yeah. But, like, during different phases of marriage or your relationship, um, I think those change, those love languages change. And I think it's important to always stay attuned to each other's love language. Because, you know, like, one month I could really need some acts of service, but then the next month I might just need some quality time. Or, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. Yeah. It's not that I want all five of them. It's just that, you know, I might be a little bit bipolar. Not bipolar, but, you know. I mean, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. Like, I don't think that's a thing. I don't think you can have one love language. And I think you probably have three, you know, that just, that just circulate. Um, but at the same time, like, I think for me... I'm I'm getting so weird when I'm turning into like the guys I used to be like, man, you need to love your wife more. But I'm also like, yeah, but how are we gonna survive? Like, you know what I mean? Like I think so much about the future and like you think so much about now. You know what I mean? And so I can't live in the future, even though that I'm working for that. Mm -hmm. Babe, how married are you? I'm so married that I don't think we should end this conversation. I think we should do a part two. I agree. Next week, part two. To be continued.